Okay, this is it. The final painting. Um, this will be fun. I think this will be a lot of fun. Uh, right, so 16 by 12 canvas upright. I gave it one quick undercoat, okay? And what I'm going to do now is, let me see now, can I turn that around? Can I pull this over? I'm just going to see can I pull the canvas closer to me. I do apologise. It's just that it's very far away from me and it might be difficult to reach across to the palette all the time. So I think just there. That makes life much easier for me. So there's a reference photograph now. I think that's lovely. It's just, it's intimate. It's soft. It's inviting. It kind of draws you in. So something simple like this can be very effective. Let's try it. A little bit of branch coming down there. We're not too worried about that. Um, I'll leave all the snow and all that kind of thing, okay? I don't, I'm not worried too much about all of that. What I want to do is draw just this lantern. Isn't it lovely? A lovely little lantern. It's simple, but I think when it's done, done, it's going to be very, very effective. It's really going to capture someone's eye, I think. Um, so something like this can be very, very effective. Now, I'm going to create some perspective on this. So this bottom line goes right up like this. The top line just goes at a slight angle. Um, it's foreshortened, so you can see the side uh, it's only slightly twisted. Do you understand what I mean? So, a very quick... Um, no, this is the tricky part, trying to get this right. So let's just go like that. Like that. Um, a piece going across the front like that. And then it just sort of comes down and out, doesn't it? Like that. Okay, it's not perfect by any means, but it will be fine. And uh, yeah, I think that's that's enough. I think that's all we need. We can always make it slightly wider if we need to. Pencils down. Time to get painting. Let me roll up my sleeves, and this is the best part of it all. Getting started. Right, a brush. I need a brush. I won't use a large stubby for this now because a large stubby is a bit much. I don't think I need a very large stubby brush. Um, I have. Let me see. Now I, can, I have a nice medium. Kind of, well, it's not a medium. This is a cross between my large stubby brush and a medium stubby brush. Okay, it's a number 14. My big one is a number 16. Um, I just picked one of these up when I saw it the other day. They had this um, on the display shelf. It was the only one they had. I don't think they can get these anymore. It's just a number 12 flat. But any large flat you have will do. Okay, but nothing too big. We want to have a bit of fun with this. We don't want to just wipe it all out in 10 minutes. So I want to enjoy it. I'm just cleaning this now because there's lots of pain still in this and the bristles are quite tough. So I'm just giving it a really good clean with my tissue and some turpentine. I'm rubbing it on my tissue to get all the leftover colour out of this brush and make it nice and soft again. Okay, there, that'll do now. It's nice and soft again, okay? You can bring brushes back to life, even if they go hard. Give it another quick clean. Now, it's a nice blue, rich blues in this. So, I'm thinking thalo blue, all right? Um, thalo blue will give us a nice, rich kind of a blue, and we can warm it up then slightly. So, I'll tell you what colours I have. Titanium white, Naples yellow, cadmium yellow, uh, lamp black, thalo blue, burnt umber, um, Crimson, alizarin crimson, cadmium red and magenta. I think that will keep us going nicely. Right, I'll dampen my brush ever so slightly. Let's mix up a nice light blue first for up here. So top left corner, a nice light blue. Loads of white and a little bit of phthalo, okay? And I want to keep this whole scene kind of warm. So I'm taking a little touch of perhaps magenta, okay? Get that a nice mix around. Let me just have a quick look now. That's not bad. And I'm using linseed oil and turpentine as my medium for thinning, okay? Let me just fix this because it's rattling all over the place. There's stuff behind my table and it's just rattling all over the place. Um, let me just take some white and lighten that. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, the linseed oil. And the turpentine. You see, this makes it lovely and oily. The little bit of linseed oil in my thinners, it makes it, the whole thing nice and oily. Okay. Now I'll take a little bit of crimson, and I'm going to warm it slightly, just here and there. 
And I suppose the trick with this is um, just to have a nice soft background, but very kind of contrasting as well. Now I'm going to go slightly darker, okay? I'm going to take some phthalo blue, magenta. The magenta really makes it nice and luscious and vibrant, that colour. Um, and a little bit of crimson, then a touch of black, okay? Let me see what this does. Let me see what happens. Okay, that's not bad. And look, I don't have too much in the way of thinners in this okay i'm not making it too wet all right um i'm just kind of softening the paint just a little bit of thinners but i'm putting on plenty of paint okay plenty of it so don't be shy with your paint a uh, tiny bit of black the black is just really the sort of really dark in the tone so for here for example you see that there it's really nice and dark there and i just want to have a nice contrast between the orangey bright light here and that dark background. So a nice contrast. So let me just go around that now very carefully. I don't want to go over the drawing too much. I'm going to add a tiny bit more black into this. I think it needs to be just a little bit sort of duller in shade. Let me go across the top piece there actually look. And around. There we go like that. Just carefully. And then you see, as you're going, then you pick up little colours and you start adding colours to it. You see that? A little bit of magenta. And I'm just sort of dragging this around now with my brush. Nice and softly. Right. Another touch of turpentine. Let's go again some phthalo blue, some black, a little bit of white and a decent bit of magenta and I'm going to go over then with that colour to this corner here I'm going to soften that across and I'm going to sort of soften it upwards maybe a hint more blue mixing it all together but I'm not kind of going crazy with your mixing. I'm leaving kind of a little bit of texture on the canvas. Can you see that? I don't want to soften it all together too much. Okay. Now, I'll take a touch of turpentine again. When I say a touch of turpentine, I mean thinners. So my turpentine with linseed oil in it. Okay, that's what I mean. Little bit of that just there. I should just say a touch of thinners really, but I'm used to saying a touch of turpentine. It's just a bad habit, I suppose. But I'll do my best not to say it all the time. Okay, let me just soften this now just very gently like that. And because I really want to get onto the focal point of the picture, which is this right here. Okay, that's the focal point, and I really want to concentrate on that and spend a bit of time doing it really really nice magenta blue and come up here like that so you can see now i'm not really softening it in too much you see i'm leaving some hints of brush strokes just here and there all right you can now just soften all of this in, if you like, if it's the type of painting that you like, just to soften everything in together. Okay, absolutely. You sure can. Now I'm going to go for a little bit of darker colour. You see these leaves coming down here, this, this foliage rather with the snow. I want a nice dark colour behind that. So I'm going to go with blue, some phthalo blue, some crimson this time. Perhaps a little black, okay. And I'm going to put that nice rich dark colour just up in this corner and allow that to kind of taper down. I'm going to take more black in this, I think. It's a little bit blue for me still with some magenta. I think that will really make a nice contrast. Ah, there we go. That's a little bit better now, isn't it?
it's just to suggest kind of darkness in the background some foliage off in the background but it's very very hazy do you know what i mean very very hazy background so i'm just kind of softening it in your mind will fill in the blanks it will kind of tell you the story of what it is you know you can see it's just little highlights and darks off in the background over there let's go for another little bit come down at a slight kind you can see it comes out at a nice angle there doesn't it Soften it all together and soften it out down here. I'm just simply scrubbing it side to side, perhaps a little hint of it down here, like so. Maybe take a hint of magenta. Let's just pop a little bit of that lovely magenta in down here and there as well. That's a nice colour, isn't it? And the pink and the magenta will really be nice and complementary to the lovely warmth of that candle in there, okay? So let's pop a little bit of magenta up here as well, just to help with the composition, okay? It just helps to kind of tie everything together when you pop a little bit of the colour here and there on the canvas. But not too much, okay? Just a touch, you see? I think that really helps. Perhaps a hint of it down there as well. Okay. Now, I'm going to leave it at that. I think that's quite nice now. I'm happy with that. Let me clean my brush. Give it a good, good, good clean here on my tissue that I have down here. Wipe all that off. Then we come to the bottom. I'm simply going to take some white, a little phthalo blue, and some magenta again. And I'm going to soften that colour across here like this, okay? And then I'm going to soften it upwards. Look with my brush, you see? So we have this beautiful, misty sort of a feeling down at the bottom where it meets the ground, but there's no actual sharp line there. Do you know what I mean? It sort of gently merges into the background down on the end, down the bottom there. Okay. And I then take another little bit of white, pop another little bit across. Soften it up with the tip of your brush, just nice little brush strokes. These brushes, by the way, are soft synthetic brushes. I don't use heavy bristle brushes at all. I like the softness of these synthetics. Just regular soft synthetics, okay? I just love the feeling they give to a painting, nice and soft. And it's not they're not very, very harsh brush strokes. You see what I mean? It's just, it gives you a lovely, it's almost like a bit of a blender brush at the same time. Do you understand? No. Okay. Just come on down here and get this finished. This should only take a couple of minutes. This bottom section. Okay, some blue. Again, some magenta. That magenta, you see, really warms the blue, doesn't it? Gives you that beautiful, gorgeous colour. A bit blue and a bit more magenta. And let's go to town on this. Look at that. Let's just pop a lot of colour in there. Lovely rich colour. Now I'm going to just go up there gently like that. Okay. I'm cleaning my brush, dampening it slightly. A bit of blue. Then some more white. And a little magenta. I'm going to just go up there with that. Okay. Bring that out there. There's a very, very good reason why I'm putting magenta, maybe even a hint of crimson. There's a very good reason why I'm putting magenta and a hint of crimson in the middle here. And I'll explain to you now in just a moment, okay? Now, the reason is, you can see on the photograph, we have a lovely warmth just around here. If I try to put that kind of pinky orange over a blue, it's going to go muddy and green and brown and all kinds of colours. So, the trick is to put a nice pink a nice warm 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 pink in there first so look i'm going to take magenta some crimson and i'm going to pop that color just in on top of this first look just like that okay just in front of that holder the candle holder or the oil lamp whatever you may call it candle holder okay let's just do that and then i'm going to soften it out at the sides you see? So now we have a beautiful feeling, don't we? 
a really lovely feeling going on. Everything is nice and fuzzy, nice and soft. So I can stop at that now, I think, okay? I'm just gonna add a little bit of contrast down here, a little bit of darkness here and there. Some blue, a little crimson. I'll go with the crimson to give it a richer, darker, darker color. Do you know what I mean? So a little bit of hint of a kind of a shadow here and there. Maybe just one or two popping out just here and there. Take another little touch of blue. Actually, then I want to take some blue and some magenta because it's such a lovely, rich color. Pop some of that in there. Very careful, okay? I don't want to overdo it. I don't want to go absolutely crazy with this. Um, I'll take some magenta on its own and soften some magenta through this because I really want those warm tones going through the painting, okay? And I just want to pull pull the eyes in. It's nice and warm and cosy, fuzzy kind of a feeling in the painting. Okay. Now, I think that will do fine. That's all we need to do. Let's go up and do these lovely snowy parts coming down. And this is where the palette knife comes in here, okay? Let's have a bit of fun with the palette knife. First of all, I'll take a small brush. I'm just going to draw some kind of branches coming down first, okay? I need to get a nice little small brush down for this. Um, I'll try this one here. Some of the brushes, because I paint so much, some of the brushes tend to go a little bit tough because I don't kind of clean them out completely properly. Um, I tend to give my brushes a very kind of a quick clean, which is the wrong thing to do. I should clean them properly, but I'm just so busy. I never have the time or the patience to do it and take my time. Um, so I'm just giving this a quick clean here now. Let's take some. Uh, let's go for some burnt umber. We could say black as well, but I think the hint of burnt umber might just help warm the colour slightly. Maybe even a touch of magenta. Look, let's keep the pinky tones going, going throughout the painting. We'll take a look at that now. Okay, that's nice. Now, with lots of that on our brush, let's just go and come like this, okay? Do, do, do. Comes up and it comes down like that. And you can see it just sort of mixes with the background as well, here and there. But that's okay, don't worry too much about that. I'm going to make it much warmer as it comes down. I'm going to add some cadmium red into that mix. So cadmium red with a little even, little burnt umber. And I'm going to make that colour warm because you can see the sunlight, uh, the light from the candle hitting that section down there, can't you? It's a lovely warm colour. And bring a couple of leaves out like that. Then I'll go into some black, real dark color, but a nice dark black then. I'll put some nice black ones here and a couple here. You see, most of this is going to be just covered in snow, thick white snow. So you don't have to put too much, too much of all this stuff in here, okay? Just a little suggestion of a little bit of it here and there. Um, maybe just one more like that, okay? No, and we have a couple of small ones popping down here like that, just a few. Okay, I think that's fine. I'm just going to take a touch of black and I really want to darken this piece along here, okay? Okay, there we go. Then we are on to our snow. Now, we need to be careful with the snow because the snow is gonna mix into all this color at the back. So I'm just kind of using a little touch of caution when doing this, okay? I'm gonna take a clean flat brush and this is where we're going to need lots of color. So I'm gonna take more phthalo blue 
Now there won't be that much fade low blue, but I don't want to be running out, so I'm gonna put more on my, my, my palette. Um, I'll take more, do I need more white? I think I might be okay for white. Let's mix up a nice bright color. You could even just pick up a touch of blue and add loads of white to it. This will be just the very early stages. Lots and lots of thick paint, okay? Very little thinners in this. Just pick up loads of paint with your brush. And then let's, uh, now I might actually make it a bit darker. I think it looks a little bit dim on the photograph. It's a kind of a dullish, bluey mauve type of a color. So I might start off with that first, okay? Uh, let's just go like that. And then we go like that, okay? Clean the brush just to make sure there's no dirty color on your brush. And then we come down like that, okay? And then we're gonna fill this in. This may take a couple of lots of paint, okay? Just to get all of this filled in. As it comes down, I'm going to make it more as a deeper color, okay? So more of this bluey kind of color going through it. And let's just keep going, filling this all in. I'll then add, once I have this kind of general color done, I start adding some depth, some shadow and some light and all that kind of thing to it, okay? Now it should be a bit wider, shouldn't it? It's a little bit on the narrow side. So let's just widen it a little. Take a little blue. And let's go right out with that color, okay? Let's go right out. Out here, all the way out, look. Um, yeah, that's not bad. I put a little bit in under here as well. Because it's sort of just hanging from the branches, isn't it? Now, it needs to be dark here because if you look at the photograph, okay? On this side, it's dark background against light snow. On that side, it's light background against dark snow. So I'm going to make that darker. Some magenta and some blue. I think that might even be enough. Let me take a look. More magenta. Let's keep it nice and warm, yes? A nice warm, warm blue. There. Isn't that better? So now we have a dark against a light background, don't we? I'll take a bit more magenta because it's picking up some of the darker color, especially from the, leaf, the, the branches, and it's just changing the color slightly. So I'm keeping it nice and warm. And then it's just sort of, it sort of tapers off, doesn't it? Now I'm also gonna put some of that color on the insides in here. So let's mix up a nice darker color for that. Phthalo blue and magenta. Beautiful Christmassy color, this. And I'm gonna start from the back in here and sort of soften it out then, okay? Like that, you see? And again, you know, I'm just going for an impression in all of this, okay? I'm not trying to paint an absolute photograph with all of this. I just want to get that feeling. All right, that's all I'm doing. Um, so many people, when they're painting, so many artists, when they're painting, they look at a photograph and they tend to become consumed with making it look exactly like that photograph. I think... You have to, I think it's a good idea to train your mind to take certain parts of the painting and copy them as best you can and then make other parts of the painting your own work and just 
generalise voxel painting a little bit. Um, I think if you can do that, it makes painting much more interesting and much more fun, rather than trying to make it look exactly like what you're painting. I'm just trying to go for the impression of that snow on the branch. I don't want to copy the pictures exactly. Do you, do you understand what I mean? It's, it's difficult to explain, um, but you know what I mean, don't you? I'm just trying to make a nice likeness, I suppose, that's all. Let's leave that just disappear off up there, okay? And we're going to put another little bit of suggestion of snow in the background up here. Just sort of popping in here and there, you see? Just very, very lightly popping in. I'm just popping in a few little brush strokes, that's all. You see what I mean? Now, Let's focus, in fact, actually, do you know what I will do? I'll bring this piece down here first, before I go any further. Um, I'm going to start with this darker blue, and just pop a little bit in. I'm just being very loose, look, very loose like that. I'm not trying to make this overly complicated. I'm going to pop a nice bright colour. Now, when it's up here, it's in dark colour, but when it comes down, it gets into brighter colours, you see. I don't know if you kind of notice that sometimes when you're painting. If you're painting in a shadowed area, it's bright It's bright against the background, but when you're going up into the light background, it's dark against the light background. Do you understand? So it completely reverses. So let me show you, look. I'm going to make a nice rich dark colour here, okay? Magenta and blue. And a hint of, a hint of black, okay? And I'm going to come up here into the dark side, look. Come to the dark side. And I'm going to put that in dark, just like that. Let it disappear. Take some magenta, maybe a hint of crimson. Just warm that slightly. But then when it comes down into that kind of darker area, okay, I'm going to lighten it. So let me clean my brush very quickly. Then I'm going to take some of that colour and just add loads of white into it and plenty of pinks okay let's go for let's try some crimson and then you see it's bright down here and i'm making it slightly pinker to catch that light from the candle okay and then i'm going to soften it in up there like that you see let it go off up into the dark so you kind of you see what I mean, don't you? Now, I'm actually going to get a small detail brush. I'm going to take some of that black, and I'm going to just put some black through that, just to suggest the old branches and that kind of thing. Now, you probably can't see it here, because the frame is going to cover the side anyway, when it's framed. So I'll just pop a little bit through. Just like that. And then I'm going to do the same brush, right? And I'm going to take some white with a hint of blue. And I'm going to go over a very bright, bright colour. Almost a white. A very luminous kind of a blue, okay? And I'm going to just go down along the outside. Just like that, all right? And I'm going to sort of soften it in here and there. And this is all just to suggest the highlight of the background kind of catching the snow. Do you understand what I mean? Or you could even go with a slightly bigger brush as well and I'll pop a little bit of white in there so i know it's a dark against the light background so i'm just popping a little bit of light just to get a bit of contrast that's all and a little bit of tone here and there 
okay? Just a little. A little bit of snow on some part of the branch or a leaf or something in there. Next, we're going to move on to this side where it's very warm down here now, okay? So I'm going to mix lots of warm colour for this. I'm going to go with crimson, some white, a little magenta. I'm just trying this now. I don't know if this is the exact shade I need, but crimson, magenta and a little white. Let's, let's try that. There's a nice little one that comes out like that. It's a couple of bits bobbing around down here. It comes over and gets really warm, so I'm going to leave all my warm tones until the very end, okay? And see, it just kind of jumps around like so. I'll take more crimson, maybe a hint of Naples yellow, and that Naples yellow will start to warm it then, okay? So I'm going to go here. And then I'm going to start softening some of that colour through this blue as well, you see. Just a little bit here and there. So it just gets, it goes from a warmer colour at the bottom to a cool colour up on top. Okay. No. I know it's an unusual kind of a scene, isn't it? It's, it's an unusual type of a painting. It's different, I find. And I like to try something that's kind of very different like this from time to time. You know, I think it's very good, good practice. And this just screams out to me Christmas. So I just really wanted to do something nice um, this time as my last tutorial. Nice and Christmassy. Um, let's put a hint of that colour up there, look. And soften them at the bottoms just as those catching some of the light from that candle, okay? I know we have a bit of a gap in the middle now, but we don't necessarily have to have a gap. I'm going to bring some of this out like that, okay? And maybe a few bits falling off, like so. So you can see it's still very kind of subdued, but I'm going to start really brightening this up now. Um, I just want to put a hint of that colour over here first. Get some crimson, Naples yellow. Beautiful, beautiful warm colour. And I'm going to just start softening some of that in here and there. Okay, just like that. Then I'm going to start putting a little bit of shadow on some of these. I'm going to go to my smaller brush, my small detail brush. And I'm going to start taking some of this warmer colour, okay? So that magenta with the blue, and I'm going to start going very, very pinky with this. Very, a mauve, more of a plum, okay? And I'm going to start pulling some shadow on the backs of some of these, like that, okay? And I'm just going to let that soften down. You could probably even go a little bit pinker with this, I'm thinking. Let's try a bit more crimson. Maybe even a touch of cadmium red. So a very warm, a warm kind of a shadow. And just soften it through with your brush then, look. Soften it back through. Um, you know, I mean, I'm not painting detail as such. I'm just trying to kind of make this believable. Do you understand what I mean? Make it believable. That's the word I'm using for it, are the words. Just to really kind of catch your eye. And I suppose emphasise really the lightness from the candle. That's the priority with painting this, is to emphasise that light. Okay? Because it's a very rich, very, very rich, rich light. Uh, okay, let's go a little bit here. And then you would soften that down into the snow, look. So it just kind of disappears into the snow. Now I will be adding some really bright highlights into all of this, so not to worry, okay? 
this is really very early this is the early stages now i'm going to find another brush i'm thinking a small round brush not a detail brush but just a nice round brush i have one here there it is okay and i'm going to start putting some real bright warmth on some of these and some cools actually i'm going to start first with some cool colors i'm going to get some phthalo blue with white and i'm just going to start popping some of that color on in some of these here okay just to give them a little bit of a kick you know what i mean that's all it is just a little and remember keep cleaning your brush when doing this okay just keep your brush nice and clean um a bit there a little bit on these i'm not going to go too far with the color down here pop some of that color that darker color in around here you see this part here is just really all just a suggestion anyway do you know what i mean next i'm going to start going for some of the real warm colors okay so i give your brush a good, a good clean it there can't be any blue on your brush whatsoever for this um a beautiful warm color for a sunlit kind of a snow scene is naples yellow and crimson okay or naples yellow and magenta but naples yellow and crimson let's try a little hint of magenta it gives you this beautiful warm peachy kind of a color which is perfect for snow scenes you see that isn't that just a wonderful color it's really warm and inviting and you can control the mix then you see if you want it slightly warmer add in a little more pink okay and if you want it slightly lighter add more yellow i want to make this a bit on the pinky side so let's go around the fronts of all these now and soften that color in okay isn't that lovely beautiful color and that really shows off the light then when the candle is being painted so you've, you've already had a couple of steps ahead do you understand what i mean now we can obviously tip away and mess around with this as we go when we're painting the candle as well but i thought it's just a good idea to get some of these just finished it's just a suggestion really that's kind of what i'm going for um let me just get a nice slightly brighter color and pop some of that in um even one or two around here and be careful with your blue because you don't want any muck or any muddy colors on this okay so just be careful by the blues And I have another little bit to finish just in here like that. Creating just nice fluffy sort of snow. Okay. Now the next thing I'm going to do is do the same colour across here. Alright. Just clean my brush. And take some crimson. Naples yellow. But again plenty of crimson in this. And this will act as the light on the snow. Okay. Maybe a hint of white. But not too much. Let's go with a nice bright sort of pinky, luminous kind of a pinky, warm kind of a pinky colour. I'm just going to drag that across there. And it softens into everything over here, then it disappears. Okay. Now I'm going to go one step further. Okay, I'm going to go brighter. I'm going to try some cadmium yellow with crimson. All right. But again, lots and lots of crimson in this. Then some white. 
the idea here is a really bright highlight color I don't want to overdo it next I'm going to take some magenta with some white and a hint of crimson and I'm going to go with this very bright pink colour and just pop a little bit of light across that snow, okay? You see that's more kind of like it now, isn't it? That's more what we're kind of looking for. Let's drag a little bit across there like that. Just to kind of merge it together slowly, just ever so slowly, just merge it. Merge it in. Okay. Now, I'm going to stop with that colour and I'm going to start adding some real rich snowy effects on this leaf here, on this little branch. I'm going to take some white, lots of white and a touch of magenta. And I just really want to start giving this snowy effect look. So I'm just putting some nice highlights on all of this. The magenta is really working nicely here. I think it's really just the right colour. It's just a nice colour. Let's go up here and pop some lights on this here and there. And we can even go in underneath some of these as well. Now for these ones, I'm going to bring it out here like this, you see. I'm just going to soften it out that kind of a direction. Okay, and you can experiment with all of this now. You don't have to copy what I'm doing exactly. You can just do go your own way, experiment, um, but just have a bit of fun. Okay, try to have some fun when doing this because it's not worth it if we're not having fun. Okay, painting has to be fun, and if we're not having fun, then you know it's just not going to work. If you take it too seriously, in fact, I find. Um, it doesn't turn out half as nice for me that's just me okay my opinion you know i'm just saying it that's all I'm saying it how i feel that's all it is now let's just go like that let's now go up and add some brightness to some of this snow here so a real 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 bright color phthalo blue with a little white okay plenty of white actually let's go up here and get this lovely sort of fluffy snowy feel on the foliage you see i'm just going around with my round brush and i'm kind of going around in little curves you see that just little curves and it's really just to add a bit of texture to this scene that's all lots and lots of texture let's go under here and give just a little bit of a kick okay give these a little bit of a kick here just up in the shadows. And I find you know, something like this is something that you can really, really enjoy for a change. Okay? Just a simple little scene like this and it can make the world of difference to your painting. It can just, it brings out certain things when you're painting in certain ways and a certain scene it can just really bring you out of your shell if you're the type of painter that very sort of reserved painting something like this will really encourage you to try different things and different colors perhaps do you know what i mean so do try it a little bit of light on these as well look 
just for the sake of it what the heck let's just let's just go for it now you could use your palette knife as well it would be a good idea for all of this and i think just a little bit over on that side now because i don't want to overdo this too much so i'm thinking just a little bit here in that shadowed area look i'm not really doing any technique as such i'm just blending it through does that make sense just to create a little bit of texture see what I mean and if you want to go into loads of detail with this type of a scene you can by all means go go wild with lots of detail okay I need to add a bit of light now just to that side over there and I'm probably almost finished I would say a little bit of that warm colour just like that okay and there we go all right i need more thinners we are on to the little box with the candle inside and this is going to be fun the first thing i'm going to do is put in a nice light background a warm background okay i'm going to take some magenta with a little bit of crimson tiny bit of blue okay but it's going to be much warmer than the background that's here because of the light inside. Well, maybe more like that kind of a colour first, okay? So let's just start with this colour first. I might go a little bit wider with the box. But look, it doesn't have to be perfect at all. Let's take a bit of crimson, tiniest bit of blue. I want it nice and warm. Just fill that in nice and loosely. What I'm doing now, you see, is when I'm, doing, when I'm looking at that photograph, I'm completely ignoring the candle. I'm trying to pretend that the candle is not even there, okay? It just makes life easier. I can see it starting to go a little bit on the blue side towards the bottom. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of that blue in there. And this will just add to the background inside the candle, okay? Okay, let's just soften it up like that. Perhaps add a little bit more magenta. Just little touches, you see? Small, small, small little touches. Um, okay. Maybe a touch more blue just towards the end just to help it translate as if you're looking through the glass into the background behind just a little and you can just maybe pop a little blue in just here and there because remember this is all going to be very very fuzzy by the time the candle is painted and all of the rest of the stuff it's going to be very kind of fuzzy so that's that the next thing I want to do is bring a really rich rich warm color around the candle okay that's the next step and for this you need a really clean brush so i'm going to clean my brush well i'm going to go for some uh, let's say crimson little cadmium yellow and some naples yellow okay i'm going to try these first but i really want this kind of on the pinky side again just to avoid any mud okay it needs to be nice and pinky just for now so let's have a look now at this a bit of color it's still a bit yellowy for me take a bit more pink and some naples yellow and then maybe some white okay so it's this lovely sort of pasty color and i'm just gonna go like this and then down like that you see it sort of hits the light on the sides doesn't it the lights bounce kind of out to the sides and the top okay 
and let's try a little touch of that color around the center so again i'm going to dry my brush and i'm going to try some magenta just a hint of magenta and this is a very dry brush now by the way and i'm going to kind of soften that around with my dry brush okay just going to soften it around like that out into the background so i'm getting ready now for my bright point just in the center okay we're getting ready for it how are we doing for time 15 minutes already how time flies i have to say i think now i'll start with the candle i'm going to get a little red and some cadmium yellow i'll try and get the candle in first i think okay but it's a very rich red at the bottom cadmium red crimson and touch of yellow and just kind of put in outline of it just first okay very red in the center of this candle isn't it really lovely red and let's just go up a little bit more i don't want to fill it in too much okay then i want to clean that brush very well i'm going to get some dark now i'm going to go back to my round brush okay my big round brush i'm going to give that a good clean and i'm going to get some nice dark color some crimson perhaps with a little cadmium red and i'm going to go along the bottom with that rich dark color okay and i'm going to soften it up the sides now this may be a little tricky for you if you're painting wet into wet i'm used to the wet into wet technique i kind of enjoy doing it this way but if you're having difficulty you could just let background and all that kind of stuff dry first okay it's completely up to yourself uh, but i kind of quite enjoy wet into wet like this softening it all together even though it's picking up some of the background color which is quite tricky sometimes it's still i really really enjoy this kind of technique let me get some black put some black down at the bottom down here okay because it's very dark and gets very very dark down towards the bottom so a very rich color let's try uh, let's say burnt umber and cadmium red okay go for a nice warm a warm color and just up at the sides that then accentuates the curvature of the candle okay and just softening it in very gently then i put a hint of real dark color maybe just a bit of black on its own just along the bottom okay soften it out very gently now that's the end of that Next, I'm going to put a very rich cadmium red with some cadmium yellow. And I'm going to go right across the middle of the candle with this color. It's a very bright, kind of an orangey color, isn't it? But it's rich. So I'm going to just start putting that in. You see? It's a very bright color. Very, very rich. Cadmium red and cadmium yellow will give you this beautiful, rich orange. Okay? And again, follow the curve down allowing it to sort of just soften in here and there then as it comes up it starts getting brighter doesn't it very bright in fact i'll try some cadmium yellow and a bit of naples yellow look let's try some naples it all sort of kind of almost disappears towards the flame doesn't it it almost sort of merges into the flame strangely so 
It just adds to the atmosphere of the scene, I think. So I'm going to just go up like that. I'm going to soften these colours down. Focusing on the centre, do you know what I mean? So they all kind of soften down towards the centre. Very gently touching the brush, just pulling it along with your brush. Okay, so you can see it's starting to get lighter, slowly, slowly, slowly. Let's go with some Naples yellow, some cadmium yellow, and that's a really bright colour. Go with that just around the centre here, because getting that vibrant candle light is going to be quite tricky. So I'm just going to soften this now first, soften it all around. Okay, just like that. So you can kind of begin to see it now coming into its own, can't you? Albeit a little slowly. The next thing I want to do again is put a nice bright spot just in the centre here. So I'm going to take some maple yellow. I'm not going to go too over the top with this colour. So I want to make it slightly warmer. Maybe a hint of crimson. Cadmium yellow, a hint of crimson and some Naples yellow. I don't want to go very, very yellow with this, okay? It's a warm colour just to help with the background. So I'm going to come down and paint over all that, just like that. And I'm going to soften it down slightly into the candle as well. Now the next thing I want to do is, I, I want to be very careful with this. I'm going to take some pink in with that and I'm going to soften some of the pinkier colour of that outwards, okay? As if to create that kind of glow around the candle. Do you understand what I mean? You do. To create that nice kind of glow. I don't want to kind of ruin it as such. I don't want to go over the top with all of this. But I do want to make the focus on this center point in here. Now the next thing I'm going to do is simply a very bright colour for the candle, the candle flame itself. Cadmium yellow and some white. And let's just simply, go like that, okay. But you can't really see the shape of the candle, do you understand what I mean? The, the, the flame, you can't really see the shape of the flame, it's so bright. So it sort of just dissipates. Let me just get this back on here. It just kind of dissipates around, doesn't it? You see, I'm just kind of dragging little lines around here and there. You see what I mean? And perhaps just the tiniest little touch of white in the center, just to really Draw the eye in, okay? Now, I think I'll leave it at that because if you overdo any of this, it could go horribly wrong. So I'm going to leave this and I'm going to go up now and start doing the top. And I'm going to go very dark with that top. The outside case, okay? Let's do the case. Let's just go, and I'm black running all down my palette and all sorts of stuff. Some crimson, some burnt umber and a bit of black. And I'm going to start with, let's go across the top here, okay? Like that. I can't tell if that's very straight. Don't think it is. And let's fill in. The hardest part is to get these curves just right. Let's just fill this in, yeah? Come on, let's go for it. Let's take some thinners, make this a little bit easier for us.
Okay, I need to come over slightly more this side, don't I? Okay. And again, another little bit. I can see it's not perfect, but look, it doesn't need to be perfect, does it? And let's go um, put in a little piece across the top here. Okay. And then we simply have our little piece like that and a little square on top. Now what I'm going to do is start putting in some really dark shadows on this. I'm getting some rich phthalo blue with some magenta. And then want a tiny bit of white. And then I'm going to start putting in some real dark areas on this. With that dark bluey colour, okay? Because although it's in black, you're still going to see little highlights. So let me show you what I mean. If I take some magenta tiny bit of blue, you can still see little touches of light hitting the lantern here and there. You see? I don't know if you can see that now, but it's only very, very slight. It looks like it could be just, um, you know, a pure black lantern, but there is little touches of highlights catching it here and there. You see that, for example? And a little touch of it there and perhaps just on the top there as well there are only slight little highlights now but I think it helps it makes a difference okay and then I'm going to put in, get my small brush, I'm going to put in a few little holes here and there. You see some holes going across it. One, two, three, four, and again, one, two, three and then just two up here okay then what I'm going to do is just take a tiny bit of light color and just refine some of those you see just one side and then I'm going to take lots of black on its own and go around the backs now we have a bit of a handle don't we I think we should get a handle on this okay let's just go like that And like that. Okay. And then, of course, we'll have a tiny amount of highlight on one side of the handle. It's the small details I think make the difference. So, look, a little highlight, for example. Here and there. Doesn't that make a huge difference? It really just brings everything to life, doesn't it? Doesn't it just? 
and then lastly let's go around all the edge of this now with just some nice rich black i think firstly let's come down the sides and i do hope that you all have a fabulous christmas and i hope santa brings you everything you wish now let's go around here make that nice and thick the sides need to be nice and thick don't they and i could have probably used a thicker brush for this but what harm? So there, uh, let's come down and turn it slightly. So it looks like it's almost sort of disappearing into the snow. okay and then we have a suggestion of this side like so it's only a loose suggestion all right only a slight suggestion and then we have a darker line inside suggesting the inside of this side here you see but that's going to be warmer there's a bit of cadmium red in this so you can kind of understand what i mean that's showing up as a warm color inside there and maybe another little one across the top as well but it's all fairly kind of fuzzy anyway isn't it Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I just want to add a little bit of light to both sides of that. I'm going to go with some of this light, perhaps light pinky colour. Uh, let's get some Naples yellow, some magenta and some white. just want to add a little pink to the sides here and there. okay and perhaps a little bit to the top it's all about light okay it's all about light in this tutorial and then i'm just going to put a nice dark dark color across the bottom maybe even some cadmium red as well and just kind of soften that across okay lastly we have two little cross members going across don't we and this is where it could all go bad okay um i'm going to in fact i won't go black now all right i'm going to go with a burnt umber and red i'm going to go with a nice warm color especially for the middle so let's imagine this is the middle now it's coming down like this and then just strike through it like that plenty of red in this and then we do the same in the opposite direction this is going to be tricky now i don't want to make a mess of this all right then as they come out they get slightly darker don't they hmm okay there we are
and then I'm going to put a suggestion of some highlight on these as well okay a little suggestion so a little bit of that bright yellow like that okay the next thing I'm going to do is suggest a little bit of shadow coming off of this because it looks at the moment like it's just sort of floating doesn't it so I think even though you can't see it on the photograph too much I think a little bit of shadow coming off of this will make a huge difference so I'm going to make a nice warm kind of a purpley colour I'm just sort of going to sit it down with that colour maybe even a bit more a bit more warmth And perhaps even a little bit on the other side as well. What would you think? Just leave it sort of disappear out. Now, one more thing I need to do on this. And that is get some nice brightness right across in front of that I'm going to use a nice flat brush and this is a nice long tutorial isn't it these are the tutorials I really enjoy let's get some magenta some Naples yellow and maybe a little crimson and I'm going to put firstly that color just right in front of that there as if it's just sitting down inside the snow let it taper off I'm being very soft now with this okay nice and soft easy does it and then I'm going to go with just some nice real bright colour cadmium yellow and some crimson okay but again a lot more crimson so it's quite pinky and then some yellow and some white and let's go for this very bright highlight color look like so and my friends I think I am ready to call this one finished because I don't want to ruin it as they say isn't that right so if you wanted to now for the last few seconds take some white perhaps and just catch some of the highlights on this snow coming down look it's really just to create some texture that's all so here for example okay and we could put a little bit here just to add to the snowy effect that's all it is okay and I won't overdo it there we are my friends I think that's job done I have one last little job to do on this which is to sign come down here 
S Conway. And I also have a frame, my friends. I'm going to stick a frame around this and see how it looks. Here we go. It's still a little bit wet, but let's have a look anyway. And there we are. Isn't that wonderful? There we go, my friends. Done. And there we go, my friends. Uh, I, I really hope you enjoyed that. Let's take another quick look. Finished. It looks quite nice with the frame, doesn't it? So I'm very happy with that. Um, listen, have a lovely, wonderful, uh, fantastic Christmas. I will see you in the new year for another tutorial. In the meantime, um, God bless you all and thank you so much for your support. It has truly been an honour painting for you and um, I hope you've got lots of hints and tips along the way. God bless and Merry Christmas everybody. I will talk to you very, very soon. Take care.